truly amazing that such a short article can contain so many statements that, to put it plainly, are quite simply wrong. The article says the solstice will begin at 4.44 p.m. GMT on the 22nd of December. This is wrong. The December solstice didn't begin then. It is an event which occurred at a particular time when the Earth's North Pole was tilted furthest away from the sun. This happened at 3.27 in the morning. The journalist writing this article could have easily checked when the solstice occurred by looking on a reputable website such as timeanddate.com. I wonder where on earth they got the figure of 4.44 p.m. from. The article says that the solstice arrives on the same day across the globe. That's quite simply wrong. The day and time the solstice arrives depends on your time zone. San Francisco, which is eight hours behind London, the solstice arrives a day earlier at 7.27 on December the 21st. OK, let's look at the statement. The solstice also occurs when the sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn. This is badly written. The Tropic of Capricorn is a line of latitude running 23.44 degrees south. And clearly the sun can't be overhead everywhere on a line of latitude at the same time. At some places located on the Tropic of Capricorn, it was actually dark at 3.47 a.m. UT when the solstice occurs. So probably it should have said something like this. At the December solstice, the location where the sun is directly overhead lies on the Tropic of Capricorn. The article says a solstice occurs when the sun reaches its lowest or highest point in the sky during the year as a result of the Earth's axis tilting to or away from the sun. This is both badly written and incorrect. The sun reaches its lowest elevation every single day of the year at sunrise and sunset. So perhaps the authors meant to say something like this. At the solstice, the sun reaches either its lowest maximum elevation for locations in the northern hemisphere or its greatest maximum elevation for locations in the southern hemisphere. But even this, although it's true for most locations on Earth, it isn't true for all locations. There's a certain range of locations in the southern hemisphere where it's definitely not true. I've put a summary here. The sun rises in the east in the morning, reaches highest elevation at midday, and then sets in the west in the afternoon or evening. The maximum elevation the sun reaches is given by this formula 90 degrees plus the declination minus the latitude of the place. The declination of the sun can be thought of its latitude on the imaginary celestial sphere surrounding the earth. It's zero at the equinoxes in March and September, maximum of plus 23.44 in the June solstice and a minimum of 23.44 in the December solstice. If you want to know more about right ascension and declination, then I suggest you watch my interesting video on astronomical coordinates. So, as we've just seen, at the December solstice, the declination of the sun is minus 23.44 degrees. This means that the formula for the maximum elevation at the solstice is this. 66.56 degrees minus the latitude. So if you put these numbers in for a location between the Arctic Circle and the equator, we find that on the date of the December solstice, the sun achieves its lowest maximum elevation and the least hours of daylight. For example, 
Manchester, England, 13.06 degrees and seven hours, 28 minutes. If we put these numbers in now for the Arctic Circle, it gives us a maximum elevation of zero. What this means is the sun just briefly touches above the horizon for a, a few minutes. If we go even further north of the Arctic Circle, then the formula gives it a negative maximum elevation of the sun. What this means is the sun doesn't rise above the horizon. So the hours of daylight are zero. On the equator, the December solstice is one of the two days in the year when the sun reaches lowest maximum elevation in the sky, 66.56 degrees. The other day is the June solstice. The sun actually reaches its highest elevation in the two equinox, equinoxes in March and September, where it's directly overhead at the zenith. For locations south of the equator, latitude is negative, so we have to add the latitude if we measure it in degrees south. So for Cairns in Australia, latitude minus 16.9 degrees, the maximum elevation of the sun is 83.46 degrees. But this isn't the highest elevation of the sun. This happens on two days either side of the solstice. In the case for Cairns, it's February the 2nd and November the 10th. So at locations on the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun is directly overhead at its maximum elevation. If we go to locations further south than the Tropic of Capricorn, then the formula we've been using so far would give a maximum elevation more than 90 degrees, which is directly overhead. So to give us an elevation between zero and 90, we have to change it slightly and subtract our answer from 180 degrees. So take the example of Wellington. This means the maximum elevation is 72.14 degrees, the highest of the year. If we go to locations with latitudes on the Antarctic Circle, the sun doesn't set at all on the day of the solstice. It just touches the horizon at its low, lowest elevation of the day. So there are 24 hours of daylight. On the days either side of the solstice, though, the sun does set. As you go to locations further south than the Antarctic Circle, the number of days either side of the solstice where the sun doesn't set increases until you get to the South Pole, where there are 24 hours of daylight for six months a year.